So, it is week four in January, and we started way back January 7th talking about our spiritual gifts. Uh, hi, Adrian. I yes, know, we've, we talked we've been about our talking spiritual about gifts. our spiritual it's gifts. It's our greatest gift. Yeah, um, I've been using mine. It's only kind of used. Um, and I'm kind of tired. I'm a little exhausted. So I'm just going to think about giving it back. So, like, you know how hard it is to, like, work with kids? I love them to death. <laughs> I really do. But, like, so COVID happened. And you had to recreate curriculum because you had to teach kids from their home which is amazing. And then we had to recreate it the next year because things changed and they were kind of at home and kind of not. And then you had to recreate it again the next year because they were in church, kind of. So, oh, and volunteers. Do you know how hard, how hard it is to get volunteers for events? Yeah. They do not come out of thin air. They don't. Like someone has to go find them and someone has to plan the events and it's exhausting. <laughs> I'm so tired. Um, so I think I'm just going to give this back to you. I'm going to ask God for a redo. I'm going to be like, hey, God, I would love a gift where I can sit on the couch and just read a book and just totally chill. So thanks. You hold on to that for me. Uh, uh, but a Adrian, do you, do you know what would happen if, like, you stepped out of you finished, kids' ministry? Um, Adrian, that's like a, a big hole. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I do happen to know how hard it is to get volunteers. <laughs> and I, 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 I know. It is. It's it, a little frustrating. It is. It really is a good gift. Like, it was, it's well used. It's well loved. Um, I do like working with the kids, and they really do. I, oh my goodness, the kids say the most amazing things, and they just fill you so much when they're little prayers. And, oh, I love it. I have amazing adults in kids' ministry. Amazing. Um, so maybe I'll just hold on to it, maybe for a little longer. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Adrian Gaudreau, um, and I am a Kids of Alders Gate volunteer. Um, we came, my family came to Aldersgate through the preschool, and we started attending here in 2013. So for four years, I would sneak in that side door, and I would sit in a pew over here, and then I would sneak out that side door when the sermon was over, um, because I needed to be filled. I wasn't ready to give myself, or to give of myself to other people. So 2017, about four years later, I felt so full and I was running over and I felt God pushing me to find a place to help others. Um, and that summer, Melanie Feldner started sending out emails for Sunday morning teachers. Well, I did not know enough about the Bible. That clearly was not for me. I was not meant to teach children about God or Jesus. Not meant to be. Um, so, you know, emails keep coming, emails keep coming. Uh, October still needs a teacher. So I'm like, all right, like, sure. I told Melanie, if you really need me, I can probably help a little bit. Um, and I met like two of the most amazing women, Debbie Smith and Sue Royer, like the best people you will ever meet. They were fantastic to teach with my first year. And they filled me up and built me up so that I could go and do a little more. Um, so over the past seven years, I've gone a little deeper and a little deeper. And sometimes it's God guiding me to do more, and sometimes it's God guiding someone else, and I just walk beside them. Um, and we do a ton of stuff with the kids, and it's not just Sunday morning. So yes, I teach Sunday, but I also come in on What's Up Wednesday nights, and I lead a program for third, fourth, and fifth graders once a month on Sunday afternoons. And we do amazing things like VBS programming and curriculum writing, and we do mission projects, and we do Christmas plays and campouts. Um, so there's so much more than just a Sunday morning with the kids. Uh, if any of you feel a little nudge or a shove, as it may be, towards kids' ministry, I would love to talk to you. Um, when I'm not teaching, I do sit on this side of the pew at 10 a.m., and I do sneak in and out of the side door still. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Um, 
Adrian really sums up what it's like to begin to serve Jesus and put your life into it beyond these moments on Sunday morning. Uh, and we, that, that's where we're moving in these six weeks leading up to Ash Wednesday is that, uh, you know, we started January 1st and it's just, hey, how has God shaped you? What are your spiritual gifts? Then, then the, the next week was our next steps. And it's about feeding ourselves and taking that step in the world just to be loving and hospitable. Um, and then last week, we talked about how to launch into ministry. Um, and it was David and Goliath and David at his stones. And we each are given a stone in some way that God desires us to use in the world. And so today we come to, uh, you can have this back, that um, when you get into it, what does it mean to serve and to follow Jesus beyond Sunday morning? So our scripture this morning comes from Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 to 13. Now, this is just a small portion of a larger story. Moses at this point is at the top of the mountain encountering the burning bush. And this is towards the end of what we say his calling uh, in the burning bush. And so Exodus 4, 10 to 13. But Moses pleaded with the Lord, Oh Lord, I'm not good with words. I never have been and I'm not now, even though you've spoken to me. I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Uh, then the Lord asked Moses, Who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send anyone else this is the word of god for us the people of god thanks be to god so let us pray oh lord you have already been speaking as we worshiped in song um through hearing your word in choir and and through Adrian's very personal story. Take all of this God and your scripture and bring it alive in our hearts. We pray not only to hear, but to be your people. Amen. So as I mentioned, these four verses are just part of a larger story that begins way back in Exodus chapter 3. Now, even before that, Moses has fled from Egypt, and he's been in Midian and the desert for years. He's now married, he's got kids, and he's out shepherding, and he sees a bush that's burning, but it isn't consumed. And so he climbs up on the mountain, God says, this is holy ground, take your shoes off, and he gets this message. You see, God is now ready, and hears the cries of the people, and Moses is the one being called to go down and speak to Pharaoh, and then lead the people out of Egypt, across the Red Sea, and into the Promised Land. And... Uh, Moses has a, a few choice words to say to God about this. Not once, twice, three times, no, no, four times. 
Moses does not want to go. He doesn't want to be the one to go and lead the people. Uh, in, in fact, he, he, four times he tries to get out of it. He says at first, for three times he says, look, like I'm tongue-tied, you know, I haven't spoke Egyptian in decades, like it's not me, right? No, I, 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 I get twisted up when I talk, I'm not eloquent. eloquent. <laughs> and each time, God says go. By the fourth time, in fact, it's very interesting. The proper and the often used to give God um, honor and glory in the Hebrew, the common term that is used is Yahweh, translated from the Hebrew as the Lord. So Moses tries that for a few of his denials, and then by the end, he says, my Lord. The Hebrew is Adonai. It's a much more familial name for God. It's not used often because you gave God that total respect. But here at the final, no God, not me, please don't send me, um, he uses my Lord, Adonai. He even recognizes this, that this is God, right? Like so, oh my gosh, this is my Lord and still by the fourth time he says, Please send anyone else. Now, you also heard that from Adrian this morning. Send anyone else. I want a spiritual gift where I can sit on my couch and just read, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? Because serving God, especially if you haven't done it before and you're just contemplating stepping in, it can be scary. And then when you get there, serving God can be frustrating. Four times, Moses cries out to the Lord, to Adonai. And, and the scripture says, our translation this morning says, he pleads. By, by, verse four, by chapter 4, verse 10, he's no longer just suggesting. The scripture says he's pleading. I really think by the fourth time, it's more like a plead beg. I mean, to the fact that he says, please send anyone else. We can deny. We can deny to serve God. And God will continue to call I have friends. I actually, I have a cousin as well. And I know they're called. And um, one of them I know is called to full-time ministry. And I'll tell you, those friends I know that are called and they run are some of the most dissatisfied people I know. Because God continues to call. And you see, we can always hear and feel and know it. It's how we follow. Because um, Moses says by verse 12 and 13, actually verse 13, please send anyone else. And yet, in, his in God's response, we also learn that God has a plan. Because for three times, Moses said, I'm not eloquent. Like, I get tongue-tied. Some have said that he, he might have had, like, a, a speech impediment of some kind. And he, he uses this to try to get out of God's call. And so in verse 12... God says, look, Aaron is on his way to meet you. So God 
is with Moses at the burning bush and knows what Moses is going to say. And, and, and so guess what? God already put into action. It would have taken days or weeks ahead of time because God told Aaron, look, get up, go to Midian and find your older brother. Because God has a plan. We do not serve alone. God has a plan. God already told Aaron, go find your big brother. When we step into ministry, God places people in our path to support us and to help us. Melanie, I mean, uh, Adrian talked about Debbie and Sue. Then she talked about, she, she talks about how Melanie, the kids director, came alongside her. And then eventually it became the entire team of the volunteer adults of Kids of Aldersgate. When I stepped into ministry, I was blessed. I'm um, second generation, so I had a built-in support system already, and uh, I, I was able to join a group to study the scriptures every week. Uh, but when I hit a rough spot in my first, second year of ministry, about 18 months in, my mentors heard about it and called me and said, fourth Wednesday of the month, we expect to see you. Here's where you are. Here's what time show up. 25 years later, that is still my support system and my prayer group the fourth Wednesday of the month. You see, we don't do this alone. It can be very scary if we haven't stepped into ministry and you think you're going you're gonna to be all alone, and yet the scripture teaches us. It's still so relevant today. Look, God said, Aaron He's already on his way. And guess what? We'll learn later in the scriptures that Moses also had the elders of Israel as a support group and a help to get the job done. We don't do this alone. That's why we're called the church. I know, crazy, right? That we don't do this alone. Moses thought he was alone, <laughs> and he's like, please send anybody else. And God already had the plan in place. Now, one of the biggest, I think, fears or complaints I hear uh, from people stepping into ministry or even those serving is like, well, how, how will I worship? Like, if, if, I, if I do the soundboard or the media, like, I, I have to pay attention, and I have to hit the space bar when you're ready for the next teaching now, right? And I'm like, oh, but then I have people go, oh, wow, I have to pay attention when I serve. <laughs> and they're like, oh. Or people say, ah, if I'm on hospitality, like I'm going to miss that first song and that last song, and if I serve on communion, then it's not as special. But guess what? I literally walked out of the 830 service, a brand new person joined the hospitality team in January, and she said to me, I, I didn't prompt this, really. This is how God works. She said, this is such a blessing. I love this. I never knew I was built to do this. Goosebumps. See, God has a plan. And when you step into ministry, it's to find God and worship while serving. Adrian talked about, you know, oh, it's really frustrating. And she's responsible to get volunteers. And let me tell you, it ain't easy. And then she said, oh, but then a kid just says something out of their mouths about God and I learn so much. Or one of them, I'll tell you, man, if you want to get spiritually filled, serve in kids' ministry and hear those kids pray. Mm, 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 mm. So it's we 
when we serve, we find God in more unique ways than simply sitting and participating in worship. And so it's to find God while serving in those moments and to be filled and worship in brand new ways. To experience God in more ways and know, because when we serve, we get so much more back in faith The series is about building our lives, taking it from this moment to our personal devotions and our next steps to putting our faith in our every day. And ultimately, we serve because it makes a difference. We serve because it makes a difference in the world and in our own lives. You don't see it all the time, even in kids' ministry, because, you know, they, um, they are messy, uh, and their nose runs at this time of the year, and you have to take them to the potty. But then you get those glimmering moments. You walk out. And someone says, and, and, and to be honest, this, this person on hospitality, she said, I'm only here because of you. Well, the story behind that is, at 7.30 on Christmas Eve, all of our hospitality team got the COVID or the flu. And so I was desperate. I walk in at 7, and the two people here, my daughter and this other person, and I'm like, could you please hand out candles, you know, because it's kind of important on Christmas Eve. And she said, I'm only here because of you. I said, no. (laughs) People say no to me all the time. (laughs) I said, it's because you said yes. You said yes, and now you are greeted by someone who has the passion and the love to do it, who then says, man, this is, I get so much. I'm even, she even said to me, I'm having a really down week, and I just looked forward to do this ministry this morning. It makes a difference in others' lives, and in ours. And that's why we do this.